All right. Hey, what's up, team? It's August. What's going on? This is Eddie Gray. Uh, nice to see you, hear you, feel you, and be with you at this time. Super excited to be here. Uh, resources for the modern creative. And if you've been following along in the channel, you know that we just finished off a big challenge over at hfmusicacademy.com. And a couple of our members hit their actual numbers. They actually set up a target and then they hit the actual target. So it was really amazing to see people who hadn't really been productive, hadn't really been writing albums or songs or EP, EPs, and then all of a sudden, boom, they're just in the mix with HF Music Academy. So uh, I love that we're helping so many creative people out there. And then now what we have to do is we have to go from productivity to reaping the rewards and actually monetizing our music. If you don't know anything about the world of music licensing, do me a quick favor. Go to hfmusicacademy.com and there you will find all the information that you need to know. I've been doing this for the last six, seven years. I've been on an all-time high. I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, you're now with me in my music studio, and we're about to look at a song that I'm submitting for a television show that's called Snapped. So let's get right in, and we'll chat a little bit. Okie dokie. So uh, you guys have questions, go ahead and hit me up in the comments. If you like the content, go ahead and like and subscribe. But what we're doing right now is we're looking at a song that I essentially recycled from my old catalog. Now, why did I do it this way? Well, number one, I can. Number two, when you're in a place where perhaps you're trying to hit a deadline, perhaps um, you've got too much on your plate already. And so what do you do? How can you find a way to still be creative, to still have fun, to still be productive, to still hit the deadline, and to still be on top? Well, the way you want to do it is you want to go ahead and take music from yourself, borrow or steal, depending on how you look at it. Either way, it's your own music, and that's okay. So here's a track that I did for Born This Way Season 3. If you don't know, I was the head composer on that for uh, its entire duration after the first season, and uh, I had a blast composing for that. That was my first, you know, big gig. That's when I got my big break and uh, really enjoyed it. And I thought, you know what? Why not take music from there and show people how to recycle? So if you haven't been keeping up with the last couple of episodes, there is a volume of information, lots of gems in there. So check those out. So let me play what I have for you thus far. Um, right before we got on here, I started adding an intro because we're we're about to wrap this song up. And so I'm going to go ahead and just play what I have. We're going to flesh it out. You see I have my, uh, my daily objectives. Right When you write, when you mix, it's a good idea to have some objectives. I'm not saying all the time. I understand that sometimes left to right thinking doesn't serve you. And maybe you want to be a bit random and you just want a little variety. That's cool. I respect that. I love that. But what I'm saying is, is when you need to get it done day in and day out, you need a strategy. And so here's my strategy for our cast today. So without further ado, let me play this for you and then we will get into it. You ready? Let's go. Okay, wow, that's intense, huh? Give me, bring you guys some heat on this uh, on this month of August. So here, check it out. Um, this is an tension song. It's an action tension song. 
and it it's uh it has a lot of purposes we can use this during an argument in a tv show we can use this during some you know he, uh, a heated debate uh between two uh, people we we can use this uh you know for for a chase scene for even a fight and so this world here if you're good at this kind of like if i dare say nine inch nails you know kind of trent reznor dark uh you know interesting drums uh, not your typical organic drum set or even hip-hop beats this is another world another uh potential facet that you can hit if you want to monetize your music and you want to go ahead and develop a career in the music industry uh, so let's see we're going to start with number one production housekeeping so again last we left off this session looked so whacked out er everything was just everywhere the colors were off and so i just want to show you here by opening up all the tracks areas and the track stacks rather in logic that you know all my ducks are, are in a row everything looks nice and clean and and i'm real happy with the overall result uh, because i know what to do let's say you're underslept let's say again this is the fourth song you've been producing because you know if you want to cash out it's better to turn in four songs instead of just one, right? The likelihood that you're going to get a placement will be greatly enhanced if you turn in more songs. It's a numbers game, guys. It's a numbers game. You guys want to go ahead and, and, and work in this kind of industry fast-paced. Um, it's, it's a great way to get in and get better, right? Get your musical chops intact. And so... You know, did some basic housekeeping, just, you know, organizing all the guitars. Um, if anything wasn't serving the song, I muted it. You know, I'm just trying to kind of get a sense of what this song is going to be as a whole. And so that's the very first thing. Uh, the second thing I'm doing, which is new to my workflow, is, um, well, I've done it, to, you know, to some extent, but I'm changing up the variation. I took all the tracks for the most part. And I routed them, these are three new tracks, so let me route these, to bus 88. Now, why did I pick 88? Because that's a great number. Uh, it's an arbitrary number. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. But the, the point is, is I'm routing a uh, picture like I'm connecting all of these tracks over to bus 88. And for me, bus 88 is right here. I call this the master bus. And in Logic, if you ever have trouble locating anything, because, you know, just there's too many tracks or what have you, if you shift and you double click, you'll notice that the mixer will kind of update itself. So, for example, let's say I cannot find bus number nine. I'm going to go ahead and hold shift and double click. And wait, hold on. Let's see if that works. Shift and let's try that again. Double click. And there you go. Logic highlights itself in the tracks area, notifying you, hey, this is where I am, pay attention, and then you can locate what it is you're trying to find. All right, so again, I'm routing everything over to bus 88, and this is my master bus. Do you have to do it this way? Absolutely not. What ends up happening is the, the more experience you have, the better you get, the clearer you get, the more tricks that you have up your sleeve. And if you've ever watched The Great Magician, you know that a lot of it's just, you know, the entertainment. It's the sleight of hand and all of the different things that he does with his body and the way that he positions his hands and, and you know, the, how he makes you think about something that you may not be thinking about. And so in the same way, we're trying to get the listener, the music supervisor, the CEO, the executive to flip the switch and believe in our music and so the way we do that is with our arsenal of tricks so then now again you don't have to do it do it this way but I, I really like it and here's why not just for the reasons that you may be thinking but it actually frees up my my master or stereo output in logic and so now I can use this track to use various meters so listening meters, again, if, if mixing is something new to you, this is something we teach at hfmusicacademy.com. Our members are thriving, people are learning, super stoked. But I can insert all my various meters now um, 
you know, after the mastering chain and I have more information at my disposal? Am I going to completely rely on the meters? Am I going to allow them to dictate the decisions that I make? No, but they will influence what it is that I do on a day to day. So let me go ahead and hold shift and get these out of the way. So now I have some more information to look at and we have to think composition right now. Okay. So production housekeeping is out of the way. Stay on top of it, guys. 80-20 rule, okay? 80% of the time, you're writing music, you are on task, you're, you're meeting a deadline. If you, if you told this, your singer that you were going to have the song done by, by Tuesday, then, then you, you, you crank it out, you stay up late, you do what you have to do to make sure it's done when you said it was going to be done. OK, and so then now we're going to go into just a couple of, of, of automation tricks, you know, more um, uh, tools in the shed. And, and, and I just want to share with you kind of how I like to utilize these um, on, on, a song, on a song to song basis. So number two, I'm going to automate track number 20. All right. So here we go. Let's pull that up. This guy right here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me make sure this is the one. Okay, yeah, so this one, from what I remember, it's pre-fader, and, and we're going to hear like a really big pad sound. Let's listen for this. Hold on real quick. Okay, okay, okay. So here's what's going on. Th th this is not necessarily advanced, but um, this does require some thinking. And again, if you want to learn more, please email us at support at hfmusicacademy.com. We have a lot of free resources for you, a lot of free videos, content courses, amazing stuff. We're really out to help what I like to call the modern creative. So check us out. So I'm, s I'm using this bus pre-fader. So that means that uh, we're not hearing the original source sound, so this is all kind of null and void. All right, so let me go ahead and bypass this so it doesn't confuse our eyes. And so really what's going on is we're just hearing this bus here. And so this is just a, a, a parallel compressed version of what I currently have. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an automation filter for this. So like, you know, I'm physically going to move this back and forth, and this can be automated as well. Uh, there's no right way to do this. I like to try every single possible way. And then once I find something that sticks, then I just keep using it. So I've got this part that's playing back. Check it out. Okay. So from, from the outset, I know I don't need any of that low end. Okay. So here, that's going to sound a little bit different now. Check it out. Okay, now what could be interesting is if this moves back and forth, kind of like a like a hysterical sound, just going back and forth. That would be that would be rather interesting. So let's go ahead and play with that concept. Um, I'm going to insert a pan. Let's do auto pan. This one is by Audified or Audifex, uh, capital A U D I F. F E X by Audified from what I remember. And so then now hopefully this moves around a little bit. Let's take a listen. All right. And then it's uh, you know these days it's not it's not enough to really just listen. I feel like we we have to look at the signal as well. And uh let's see do I have a Hold on. I've never used this meter. I usually use the multimeter. Yeah. All right. So that's cool. But I'm looking for like a left and right. And I wasn't sure if I got that there. But I definitely know one place to find it. And that is logic stock multimeter. All right. Cool. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the goniometer. And we're going to just look at the signal. 
This is full left, full right, and then right down the middle would be mono. Let's check it out. Okay, cool. So that works, right? And if some of you are asking, well, hey, the correlation's off, right? The phase, well, it's not being, it's not played in isolation like that, right? It's it's played, you know, as a whole. And so if we look at the multimeter, it, you know, in the master track, everything should be accounted for. So let's check this out. All right, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. And as some of you guys already know, one of my big things when I mix something is I want it to be like front to back. So right now I'm listening to this part in my headphones and my perspective is, is that man, I really wish this would kind of veer off into the back a little bit. And so if you want something to veer off into the back a little bit, there's a couple ways you can do it. The way that I'm gonna do it right now is that I'm gonna pull that volume fader down or I'm gonna take the gain off the top or change the frequencies at the top. And so when we do that, this specific source sound is gonna be pushed into the back. So let's get that done. So we're gonna um, bring down the pre-fader signal. So that's one option. And again, the other one, which would probably be a little bit more clever, is just pull down the gain of the EQ as a whole. All right, why don't we try that out? Let's see what that sounds like. So here's before. All right, I, I really like that. Um, I can see a world where we also add, you know, something before the pan. Um, in fact, you you guys want to go nuts? Should we? It's August, right? I mean, should, should we just get into it? All right, let's just do it. All right, so then look, we're on bus 12, okay? You ready? Here we go. Here we go, guys. All right, so I'm going to go bus. Boom. Bring it in. And now I'm sending a bus on a bus. So right we're 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 not going to add an effect to this specific signal since it is pre-fader why not why don't we just experiment see what happens all right so this is bus 20 this is bus 20 and so i'm going to go ahead and locate bus 20 and didn't i give you a nice trick before huh didn't i give you something nice that you could play with like hey i don't know where to find bus 20 where's bus 20 all right cool i could just double click by holding shift uh da -da 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 -da. There it is. Boom, right there. It was right next to me. There you go. All right. So then, so here we go. I'm going to insert a, um, hmm, I wonder if we should do a flange. We could do a chorus. Uh, let's do a flanger. Yeah, let's do uh, native instruments. All right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. So, so you know what's happening, right? We have this source sound. It's in pre-fader. Volumes drop down. That in turn is allowing us to hear just this signal. We have a filter, parallel compression, and then panning back and forth, this great little unit by Audified. And then finally, from there, I, I send this to bus 20, which is a Ric Flair reverb. Here we go. So let me play this out. Let's see what it sounds like, and we shall go from there. You guys ready? Here we go. Hey, man, I like that. Let me show you what that would sound like if it was very intense, very wide. Here we go. Yeah, that's a W. I love it. It sounds nice. It sounds clean. Um, uh, man, I wouldn't mind even just flipping it to the back a little bit more somehow, just getting it to be, you know, positioned in the back of the mix. Don't think in front of me, right? Again, these mixes, they have to be multidimensional, super important that you understand, like it's this way, right? And so if you're in front of your speakers, right, let's say that the, the snare or whatever is here and by putting reverb or eliminating some of the high frequencies, we get to push that back. And so now all of a sudden there's depth. That's what we're looking for is that depth, okay? Here we go. So um, I like what we're doing, and yet I, I still want to hear a little bit more 
um, depth. And so we're going to add some reverb. Just a smidge. Let's do chroma. This was a game changer when it first came out. Not sure if you guys remember. I think it was 10.4 maybe, 10.3. Uh, yeah, definitely really changed the game. So we're going mostly wet. Let's check this out. Okay, not the reverb, not the sound I was looking for, but I like this concept. Here, let me go with, um, I've been pretty obsessed with these reverbs lately. Uh, check these out real quick. These are nice. And if you're wondering how I'm going back and forth and just zooming through plugins, I hold control, I click, and I access features only available by speaker food. It's a, um, a great uh, plug-in search uh, software called, I think it's called Plug Search, and it's really good. I think it costs 15, 20 bucks. Highly recommend it if you're very active in this world. It will save you a ton of time. All right, so let's listen to this real quick. Okay, much better, much, much better. I'm not necessarily overly concerned with the part, but yeah, it's it's working for me. I like what's happening. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's the main thing, you know? Perfection is the enemy of execution. Remember that one, write that down. All right, so this sounds good to me at this point. You know, I may fine tune it a little bit later, but that works. So we're getting out of here. Thank you very much. Let's go number three. Automate track number 18. So somewhere along the road, I was hearing this part, and uh, I was thinking, yeah, this would be nice if I automated it. Uh, I got to – you know what? This may be a little inaccurate because I I think I – yeah, I added tracks at some point. So here, we'll do the best we can. Let's, uh, I think it's this one, though, to be honest. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, okay, hold on. Oh, this song's coming together. I don't know if you guys heard the, the, the very first time that we, we were developing this. It sounded totally different, so I'm stoked. This is great, man. This is what keeps me going. It's the evolution of it, right? Just the, the application of it, and then ultimately when you get those results, man, it feels good. Um, okay, let's listen. And by the way, be, before I go into this... Uh, automating tracks thing and uh here let's make a little adjustment there there you go um the way that we built this was really gnarly here's how we did it we played out just a random midi note okay you see how it's se uh, sequenced out it's just a 16th note right nothing special well that wasn't that wasn't enough because if we just did that and i explained this in one of the last videos but i have to show you it's just such a great trick check it out So you understand? It's just playing one note from a guitar that I took that was from the original session. Well, here, check this out. If I run that through a transposer and I place it in the key of the song, in this case, C natural minor, then we get this. Okay, that's all fine and dandy, but then when we run that through a randomizer, this is really what brought this together because now we we bring up something that is special in music if you can pull it off it, the element of chance check it out so if we look at the source sound although i was just hitting one key because the randomizer is set to change the note number 
it goes back and forth. Check this out, my friends. Really interesting. Gotta love it. Come on, guys. That's pretty sweet. That is pretty sweet that we can do this stuff now. The options are limitless. Really only bounded by the limitations that you place on yourself. So get after it. Get after it. And um, if you guys want to learn how to use this amazing software, Egoist by Sugarbytes, I just provided a free two and a half hour tutorial on this, on how to get into the nitty gritty. And so if you're interested in that, go ahead and email support at hfmusicacademy.com and then we'll send that free of charge. Support at hf hfmusicacademy.com. All right. So we're doing good. Love that sound. Transposer sounds really nice. Um, man, let's think about this part here. All right, all right. I, I, I definitely want to treat this synth. And I can call it like a tremolo synth for now or something so I can, so my eyes can distinguish. But here's what I'm talking about right here. This guy, here, take a listen. Okay, 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 here, let me listen to this one real quick. <laughs> Which one was I thinking? One sec. Yeah, it was definitely this one. Okay, so we're hearing a glitched out guitar that was created inside of uh, Egoist by Sugar Bites. Here, take a listen. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go into Latch Automation. And so I have that set up to a key command, but you can also just access that menu right here. Okay, and there's a, the rules to should I use Trim Relative. Right now we're just using regular uh, feature so what we're gonna do is as this plays I'm gonna take my mouse or I have a, um, a controller right next to me and I just want to move this up and down just to create some life here Th you, there are different ways to do this by the way you could use a compressor uh, which by the way if I forget I really want to show you how I use this compressor on this bass. such a game changer but here before I space out I'm gonna press play Remember, I'm in latch automation, so this is going to record over and over again, okay? You ready? Here we go. Okay, let's hope that recorded okay. I usually will check my work, right? Hit the key command A, command Y to sift through automation. It looks like that did its job, but that's still not enough. We still need to look at it. We still need to hear it. It's good. It's not quite there, but it's good. So we want to take the entire value. And bear in mind, we're inside a region automation right now. We could have very well done that on the track. It, that was just an oversight, right? I'm just in the zone. I'm not particularly overly concerned with details right now. I need to get the thoughts on paper. Roger that. All right. So here I am. I'm going to click this. I'm going to drag it down. I'm going to bring these values down, okay? And so it's the same automation curve. It's the same exact thing, except the only difference is now we're going to hear less of it. So, so relative to what the volume was before, I'm just bringing it down a little bit, okay? Um, so let's listen to, these, to this automation with a little bit less intensity. Here we go. I 
just split the difference. Let's hear one more time. Hold up, hold up. That still is not quite right. Let's see if I can take... Hold up. Get this. No... All right, all right, let's lift this up a little bit. Let's just go, all right, let's see what this sounds like. Yeah, 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 good, I like that. Yep. Okay, this is a good idea. It's working for me, except I just need less of it. So check this out. We're going to do some automation. Uh, um, we're going to gain stage. So forget about automation. Let's get out of there. And so I'm going to look at the signal and determine when it is we're getting the that filtered effect, you know, when it really pops out. And when we get that, I'm going to trim down the volume. So this isn't a frequency problem. It's a volume problem, and hence, we're going to address it this way. Can I do it another way? Of course. We already know that. In logic, what? There's always five, ten ways to skin a cat. It doesn't really matter uh, which way you choose to do it. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead, press play, and find those spots. You ready? Here we go. Okay. All right, all right. So we had some activity like right around here. I'm going to double check that. Here we go. Alright, so right around here. And so what I'm going to do is inside of the region inspector, I'm just going to bring that down. Alright, let's see what happens. Again, I don't mind the part, I just think it's too loud. And so what's going to happen, my friends, is because I'm reducing the gain strength, the signal strength, when it goes into Saturn, when it goes into the compressor, when it goes into the EQ, when it goes into Gady Weighty by Boss Digital Labs, when it goes into all of these various units, it's not going to hit them as hard. Okay, here we go. All right, all right, again, I dig it. It's just too hard. Let's bring it back a little bit. Here we go. Still. say these three too loud um let's see whoa, whoa 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 why is it this there we go let's go to 18 negative 18 here we go That is an interesting effect to me. I'm digging it. Um, just one more thing. Going here. And then... Wish I could get a little bit more. Let's see. Man, what a cool sound. I love this thing. I'm just going to bring the top end a little bit down. Okay. I think that should work for right now. Again, let's keep moving. Um, and I hope you understand that you can automate a source sound, right? You don't have to stick to the same track the whole time. You can kind of like start here and then maybe develop it a little bit over time. And then maybe use another track and then add another element. So you don't have to have 
five tracks or 10 tracks or 60 tracks all laid out perfectly you know, in a static mix. You can go ahead and, and develop the song over time. Just like when you see a great movie or whatever, right? It has an arc in the same way we're trying to create that story, but in an auditory sense, right? We're trying to create something in a sonic space. So let's keep going here. Let's see. This is brand new to me, brand new workflow here, using remix effects. So if you guys have been keeping up with Logic 10.5, they uh, man, released a slew of different concepts, ideas, workflows, and really to integrate them is not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in a month. It's going to take it's going to take a little bit. Uh, even if you apply yourself consistently, just because the, you're you're changing the the consumer habits, you're changing the way that we experience the program, and so obviously if you do that, then it's just going to be a different experience altogether. So um, let me see some other things that I want to get into in addition to this. Uh, let me see. I think these are sound effects. Hold on. Yeah. So we can um, add some SFX from 31. Right, so as you start chopping away at the list, it just keeps growing. That happens. Um, I definitely want to clean this up as well. But other than that, I think everything is accounted for. What's up with this track? Oh, yeah, I bounced it to do this. All right, so let me, just so I can save myself from some trouble later, let me go ahead and hide a couple tracks here. One second. Okay, cool. Uh, I like to hide tracks just because maybe you'll need them, but... Um, Otherwise, they're not on the screen, and I can pay attention uh, and stay on task. So, hmm. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll I'll work in reverse order. Let me fix this synth. We'll add some stuff here, and then there's actually. A, yeah. Okay. I want to add another instrument too, so it doesn't look like we're using this. So let me get out of here. I thought I had another instrument in here somewhere. I guess not. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. I will try and find it at some point. Let me see. What is this egoist? Cool. All right. So here, let's play with this tremolo synth, okay? Um. Yeah, that's the one right there. All right. Cool. All right. Let's um. Let's see what we can do with this. So this is just kind of a a synth coming out of the sides, just kind of making the song bigger as a whole. Here we go. Okay, so let's hear the sound real quick. Okay, and so we're used to uh, left and right elements, right? That's... Um, that's a cool effect. It's great, but we don't really think of this stuff in terms of up and down or, or front to back rather. And so I want to go ahead and try and do something like that. Something that would be, um, forward and back. So like the sound is coming towards you and then it moves behind you, comes t towards you and then behind you. So in order to do that, we're probably going to have to create some, some automation and probably some jagged automation at that. Um, another thing too is you can use a tremolo plugin. So um, again, no no right or wrong, just different different um, outlets. So let's try this out, and uh, let me hear what we have at this point. So right now it's kind of going back and forth. It sounds pretty sweet, like I said, but uh, I'm looking for another effect. Uh, and by the way, you should save these as presets. The reason mine. Uh, my setup comes out as an auto pan is because I set it up that way. I saved as a default. Really nice feature. Uh, okay, let's listen to this. Yeah. So right there kind of feels like it's going up and down per se. And so maybe if I change the settings, it'll feel a little bit different. Let's see what this sounds like or hear what this sounds like. A little less. All right, let's hear the context of the song. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to add some overdrive 
just to get it to cut through the mix. Could be wrong, but let's try it. Default setting works. By the way, this is a, a pretty sweet setting as a default. Go ahead, take a screenshot. I'll wait for you. Three, two, one. All right, here we go. Okay, so we kind of hear this idea, and it makes sense, and I really like it a lot. Um, I wish it carried on a little bit longer. And so for that, um, let's see if we have an on. There we go, an envelope. Let's see if the decay can last a little bit longer. Um, let's see if this works. Here, let's check this out. Uh, let's go here. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds pretty nice. Uh, maybe a little bit more. If uh, there's an effects unit in here, then we'll go ahead and start playing with this. Let's do, um, uh, what's up, what's up? Lo-Fi Screamer. Hmm, I'm assuming this is delay. Here, why don't we just play with that? Uh, turn it on. Cool, let's see. That was not delay. Yeah, no, these are insert effects, so yeah, distortions and things like that. All right, so then let's go to sends. Thank you very much. Uh, yep, that works. Let's hear it. Okay, so starting to come together. I'm interested in the idea. It calls me. It works for now. All right, so I got a pretty good intro. I, I definitely have a um, what I would consider a captivating intro, right? Sounds interesting. It kind of keeps the listener engaged. Um, look, I've done a lot of songs for TV, over 5,000 placements in the game today, uh, commercials, trailers, all sorts of placements all over the world, and uh, you know you start getting a sense of what works and of course a lot of it has to do with your artistry a lot of it has to do with with who you are uh, what you do if you believe in yourself but then you know another part of it is just a job right there are people that need music they need it to to fit a certain criteria and then you get picked you know um, there are a lot of people doing this out there and so right now we're working on let's see snapped we're working on um, Sports anthems uh, for NBC, Fox. Uh, let's see. We're also doing um, uh, these uh, kind of like commercials. Uh, and there's just a ton of music. Everything from tension to, uh, you know, working on American Pickers, blues rock, 70s classic rock, 80s classic. So, so there's a lot of stuff out there. And... Um, I mean, ideally, you're the kind of person that makes a lot of different kinds of music. And so um, that that would work well because you can make money in different spaces, right? You don't have to kind of stick to just one thing. Yeah, so this is an action tension cue, right? And I was able to kind of refurbish an old track of mine and having fun and learning in the process. You know, I always tell people, 
the best thing about this is that I get to learn and grow every day and I get to contribute to the lives of other people. I just love it. I love the fact that, that I'm learning so much, you know. And so, yeah, it means the world to me. I'm absolutely in love with it. And uh, it's just great. It's just great. So this is cool. Happy about this. Uh, let's see, track 31. I guess that would be this one probably. Here, let me check this out. You hear that in context, hold on. Okay, so this right here is a bit of a wild horse. So, you know, there's there's that to think about. But it sounds interesting. I may just bounce it to audio and then just try and pick my spots. But it works. It sounds interesting. I'm into it. Let's put this um, with the other guitars. So hold shift, create a group, option C. Boom. We're in business. And let's see, we got the tremolo. This sounds pretty good as a whole. Um, I can see this working as well. Um, hmm. There, there was this sound still kind of sticking out to me. Let me see if I could filter it down a little bit more. Uh, and you know what? Maybe even Saturn is a saturator. And so it's coloring this in a very detailed way. So maybe we just color it a little bit less. All right. Let's see if that helps. Maybe we'll bring this down too. All right. Uh, from the top, let's listen to this Ebo, see if we can tame this wild horse. Here we go. I'm not sure if you heard that the way that <laughs> that bended into the next side that was that was pretty incredible all right so yeah yeah yeah. I want all that please give it to me that's a uh, really great stuff and so in order to to really make this work I got to bounce it to audio so I'm gonna control B it's gonna say hey what do you want to do with the source right so with the source I'm actually gonna leave it in case we need to come back to it but more important than that right here where it says can I include the audio tail say yes in the region say yes and then do I include vo say yes okay so let's go ahead and hit okay uh, yeah so let's just listen to this last part real quick it should yup mm-hmm so it goes to that da -da, at the end there and it's just it contrasts so well and so this is gonna be this is gonna work it's gonna work so let's hide this other one cool all right we're back at it. Let me go ahead and add a little panning this time, not up and down or in and out, but left and right. And again, I'll use that same Tremolo plugin if I can get it. Let's go, let's go. All right, cool. And remember, I saved this as my default, so I don't really have to think a lot about it. Be in action, not just theater. Here we go. I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know this was gonna go in this direction Wow man sometimes I mean I gotta be honest sometimes it just feels like like when you really get into it and you really commit like something's leading you 
right? There's there's something there just kind of pulling at you guys. So get committed to your art because it, it'll take care of you. It'll provide. It'll it will open up a pathway for you. But you really got to get into it. You really have to let go. Um, this sounds real good. I'm I'm stoked about it. Um, you know, now the next thing is kind of thinking about the arrangement because I got the parts. Got the parts. I'm settled on the parts. I like it. I don't know if there's anything more that I could that can I can add as a whole. But we got some great parts here, and I'm super stoked about them. Um, let me see if I could hold on. Just playing with some uh, effects here. So yeah, I'm just kind of going through some source sounds at this point, just trying to find something interesting. Nah. I mean, these are great, don't get me wrong, but I'm, I just need to find something like that. Okay, so um, here, let me just move the playhead, reset the buffer. I'm just going to hit that one time. All right, we'll hit Shift R. There it is, right there. Let's bounce that to audio. Same settings as before, so we are good. Let's call that an impact. If you're ever looking for a nice transition sound, get yourself a nice impact. By the way, there's a lot of great ones inside of Logic, Apple Loop Browser. Some really, really nice ones. Um, I'm just kind of playing, you know, out of the box today, but a lot of good stuff in there. Um, cool. All right, it doesn't need to be that loud, right? I think you guys would agree. So let's check this out. All right, here we go. All right. I may use that here as well. Now we're just playing, guys. Now we're just painting, right? We're just kind of having fun. And so then the question becomes, well, what, did it sound good there? I thought it was okay. But would it make a bigger impact, no pun intended, if we place it on bar 14? Let's check it out. like those both um, I will keep this one because it just hit me a little harder let me see if I could find another impact sound for for uh, I believe it was yeah bar 14 so let's go to bar 14 all right let's see if we can get anything here nah. um that, that wasn't bad hmm That has a bit of a tone to it. I, I don't want any harmonic substance, right? Any actual notes, so that that wouldn't work. Let me see. I mean, I could chop off the low end. Should I try it? Let's try it. Here we go. So again, same thing. All I'm doing is I'm taking this sore sound. All right, we're bouncing that to audio. I don't need the original. We're cutting out the low end. Just like that. All right, let's see if this works. Here we go. Let me try it here. Alright, well this became something different than I originally intended, but I still like it. So, I'm going to go ahead and fade out 
the initial transient, the initial attack. <laughs> You know what? I don't I don't mind that. It's a nice little sound. Check this out. Yep. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's in good taste. All right. So I dig that. Let's call that a uh, whoosh, for lack of a better phrase. Uh, we got the impact here. We got the sub here. Things are moving. Um, and, and you know, I start thinking the, about the song as a whole. What are we gonna do? Where are things? And that you know, it kind of takes care of itself. But it's just in the back of my mind. You know, I'm just, um, I, I, I want it to happen. I care about it, right? I, I'm invested in it. And so when you're invested in something, those doors open. The possibilities open. Uh, super stoked. Uh, let's see, we're on SFX from track 31. Did I address that yet? Uh, let me just listen to, tr I think I did. Hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. So this is another automation trick that could potentially work. Let me hear this in the context, and then we'll either use it or lose it. Let's check it out. Okay, if I did suggest something, here's what I'll suggest. That we play the part and then over time this just diminishes it just kind of goes down but we're talking very slowly so right now it's really prevalent right when the when the in fact let me let me see if i can yeah there we go uh oops let's do that there we go so the part comes in you hear it the the listener is aware of it makes its its effect on the listener but then and it it affects the listener but then we we you know we want it to move because music should be you know dynamic it should move it should breathe it should have expression and so i'm not saying this is going to work we're just going to try it okay here we go And if you're there's a there's a couple sources of sound here, so if you're not really sure what to listen for, let me help you out. It's this one right here. Now this time when you listen, don't just use your eyes, okay? Look at the spectrogram in the Fab Filter Q3, and as I'm removing or attenuating the frequencies, look and feel for how the sound starts to diminish and affect you as a whole okay all right let me go ahead and uh hit latch latch automation hit that key command and here we go oh yeah this kind of stuff i don't want to perform in solo here we go So that's what I'm talking about. If we didn't have that set up here, just listen to it, it would be stagnant the whole time, right? With no movement, with no no pressure moving in and out. Essentially, it's at the same volume the whole time. It's there, it sits there, but it's not really making a difference. And so what I'm talking about is, hey, can we create something? Can we do something? Can we partake in an action in the mix that's going to make a difference? That's what I'm interested in, okay? All right, listen to it now. It's on. The, the automation will be felt and heard. Here we go. Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? Right? The song is breathing. Like, as a whole, the whole thing is opening up. And we're providing a pathway 
for again music supervisors your listeners friends whatever it doesn't matter it doesn't really even matter what music you make the point is that you're telling a story and that's kind of what i'm here to share teach you know collaborate on and so if you like this work if you like what we're doing here do me a favor just check us out just see what we're about hfmusicacademy.com and i think there you'll find a lot of resources that'll be helpful but more than that you you, you might find a home in the community that we've built with various members uh, really really outstanding people that are actually moving their careers forward in the music industry so it's really cool to see uh, one of our guys just released an ep on spotify he's doing great uh, his numbers are going up um, somebody else uh, actually same guy um, uh, just got a, a gopro commercial um, somebody else just landed a deal with a big publisher and so it's just cool to see all these things happen so if you're interested in that being active being in action hit us up hfmusicacademy.com and if you want one of my team members to go ahead and talk to you reach out to you um, you can reach out to support at hfmusicacademy.com. So here, let's wrap it up. Um, super stoked about just the development of this of this track. And so that was number five. And to finish off this uh, this great cast, thank you again for being here, for just hanging out with me. Much love, much respect. Um, we're going to use the remix effects. Now I'm going to do this in a, in a whole new way, okay? Uh, let me see what we got here. Yeah, there you go funny guy what's up man how you doing um so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna play with the uh remix effects now they, again this is a new workflow because in logic um they just released this and so it's really interesting um you can apply dj like effects no dj like effects um similar to uh you know uh, like a dj would and so, you know, we're talking here. Let's bring up the unit delay. We're talking uh, reverb. There's this interesting one called orbit, which is kind of like a, a confluence of different effects. But we have wobble, uh, a, a repeater, really cool, and then a filter. So I'm going to keep it real basic. We're going to we're going to keep the filter on the left side of the X, Y pad. And then for the right, let's play with repeater. Now, most people they would actually play with uh, the remix effects just on the master channel, right? And so that's cool. But what I'm suggesting is that uh, you branch out of that and you use it and play with it on the group level, not just on the song level as a whole, okay? So um, let's, let's just listen to it first on the master level, and then I'll start you know, picking spots, seeing if it fits anywhere. Uh, again, not tied to the result necessarily, but certainly um, like in the inquiry of, hey, what's going to work? Um, and then on the next session, when I see you cats on Wednesday, so wh what we're going to do is we're going to basically use a reference to try and get as close as possible to the song so that, so that you can land a song, land a deal, whatever the case may be. So um, again, remix effects, it's on the, 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 chat, the entire song. And so that's after the limiter. Um, you know, some people would question, well, why would you put it after the limiter? Well, if you think about it, I don't want these effects to necessarily, you know, go into the limiter or into the compressor or into the, you know, tape emulation, tape saturator. So we're putting this at the very end of the chain for that reason. And so let's go ahead and increase the size. Yeah, that looks good. All right, cool. And so um, I'm going to go ahead, play and just kind of experiment. And we'll see what, what we can come up with. Um, again, all this is um, is configurable. We can you know assign this to sliders and what have you. I'm just going to go ahead and play on screen. Um, and if you have Logic Remote, the the iPhone app or the iPad, it's really nice, great little uh, workflow. Let me go ahead and press play, and then we'll just experiment. <laughs>
you get the idea, right? You would just color, you would just paint over time. Um, there's a little bit of latency here, so I'm, I'm trying to compensate for that. But um, essentially, it's just about trying to find a rhythm, trying to find something that works. Um, I actually really liked the way that filter cutoff sounded right there. I thought it really worked well. Um, so let me go ahead and just hit that. So latch automation on the stereo output level. So let me go ahead and get that going one sec. Uh, I guess it would be let's see here actually. So let's go latch. All right, it's on. All right, that's the one. Here we go. All right, so that worked out. That that uh, felt good. What I'm looking for when I do this stuff is not anything over the top, you know, anything too in your face. You know, again, a lot of this music it's serving a purpose, and so there's no reason to to you know overdo it. You just kind of want to hit your mark and then kind of keep moving. So let's listen to that real quick. Roger that. Okay, so then now this is kind of what the what the aim was because I'm seeing everybody use it on the, you know, uh, a master channel or stereo output. But but I'm like thinking, wouldn't it be great if we just use it on a group level? Um, let's think. Uh, maybe the drums. Here, let me listen to these parts real quick. Uh, maybe here. So that could be something where like you have repeater going, right? So then maybe I'll just put all of these inside of, uh, wait, I guess, hold on, let me see if I could get these guys. Yeah, put these in a track stack. Let's see, can I get these in here? Uh, cool. So then, yeah, you would put it on at this level here. Let's see, let me find it. Um, where'd I leave that? Remix effects under the utility. Hmm. What is it? Specialized. There it is. All right, cool. So, yeah, a lot of it is just experimentation and just seeing, you know, what's really going to work. Um, again, if, if it's not lending itself to creativity, then, you know, let it go. Uh, let's just play with this. We're on the drum level. Let's check it out. Yeah, so yeah, if we if you get the timing right, I could see something like maybe um in here. Yeah, something in there where like, you know, the the snare or the side stick hits and then all of a sudden we're going like eighths or triplets. I think that could be interesting. Um so here, let me just kind of go for it and then we'll adjust it. Actually, that probably even wasn't a bad idea. Um, at least if we use both of those things together, right? You got the stutter effect and then just the, 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 the piece playing in the background. But let's see what it sounds like. Uh, here's. Okay, wait, what happened there? It was like a. So I guess it would be. Okay, cool. Let's check this out. Yeah, again, you know, getting some latency with uh, with uh, the cast here. But here, something like this. This is what I'm talking about. Okay. And it should just be a seamless transition right back in, right here. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on, hold on. Here we go. Right. So that's the idea, but it still feels like it's not... Uh, perfect but you would just kind of keep cranking away try and get it down worst case scenario bounce to audio and then kind of reverse engineer but let's see. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's that's not bad right there. I'll take it. Um, if you wanted to play with it more, here's the rate. So I'm not going to touch it right now, but, you know, you could kind of play with maybe even the mix a little bit. Like, how much of that do I want? Let me play with this a little bit. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll take that. That was pretty subtle. Let's hear this. Maybe a little bit higher. Let's do that. Nah, nah, nah. We got to go higher. Hold on. Okay. Don't mind that. Yeah, I'm just curious. What happens if I go all the way up? There we go. All right, cool. So, yeah, just much different than when we first started. Uh, you know, recycled the tune made it work uh it fits the br brief quite nicely and that's what we'll get into when we hook up next time is we'll we'll look for ways to 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 get closer to home and, and really make it work on a um um on a reference level so you know you get a client hey i want you to make music like this or maybe you're really inspired by you know a couple new groups and you're trying to make something that's in the vein of well, in the same way, then you would analyze the music. You would try and understand the metrics, LUFS, RMS, frequency balance, stereo spread, punch, compression, and then you would make your decisions, right? You're not going to hit that target, my friends, if you're just kind of throwing a bunch of stuff on the wall. You might get lucky once. You might get lucky twice. But sustainability, right, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come from a different source. So... Um, that's pretty much it. Those are, those are the, uh, suggestions for today. Have fun with it, right? Commit to the process. If you want it, if you want it, if you really want it, then it's yours, but you got to get after it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to keep developing this song when it's all said and done, then I'm going to go ahead and show it to you guys. But for now, man, let's just keep this train going. Uh, Wednesday, we will get into the reference. We'll try and tighten it up. I'm probably going to add a little bit of guitar in there. And um, after this week, what I plan to go into is um, analyzing compositions because I'm starting to notice, um, especially at uh, with my team at hfmusicacademy.com, that a lot of people need help with kind of the, the overall theme, the overall uh, concept. For example, they may have a basic rudimentary understanding of mixing. But then when it comes to like, you know how to transition into th into the next part they don't they haven't developed those muscles yet and i feel like if we analyze music and i feel like if we look at it and we take a really um you know a clear look at what the chord progressions are how we use transitions whether they're you know cymbal swells impacts uh, you know fills turnarounds whatever the case may be that if we start looking at it day by day, you know, breaking it down, then at least you'll have a better understanding of what it is that you can do with composition as a whole. So that's kind of the next phase, but we got to finish this tune first because, of course, we, we want to definitely finish what, we, what it is that we, that we start. So thank you guys again. Resources for the Modern Creative on YouTube. Check us out. Notification bell. Subscribe. And uh, just so happy to be here. Love you guys so much. A lot of respect. Uh, stay up and stay committed. Stay in the game because you love it, because it's who you are. And if you do, I guarantee you that it'll pay off in, in the way that it's supposed to for you. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys on Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Central Time. Blessings to you. Stay up, my friends. Stay up. We'll see you later. Cheers.